The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me and qualified me to preach the gospel of good tidings to the meek, to the poor and afflicted. He has sent me to bind up and heal the brokenhearted and claim the liberty to the physically and spiritually captive and to open the prison and on the eyes of those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day the favor his favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn to grant consolation and joy to those who mourn in Zion and give them an ornament a garland a diadem of beauty instead of ashes, all of joy instead of mourning, a garment of express praise instead of heaviness and burden and failing spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, lofty, strong, and magnificent, distinguished for upright just and right standing with God, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. God bless you, beloved. It's Apostle Hendricks today, full gospel word of faith church. Come to you this August the 16th, 2020 of our Lord. It is my pleasure and my joy to be with you today. We know that God's favor and love is for you. God's overcoming Victory is for you. The word of the Lord is to you today to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Keep on the whole armor of God. Stand strong in God. Lift up the standard. The standard is the flag or the identity of the army that you're part of, and that's God of heaven, of the Lord Jesus Christ. People say God, they use the name God, but they don't identify him. He has a name, he's identified, so he can be distinguished from everything else that ascribe or try itself to be called God. And everything else that is not God, since there's only one God, is a demon spirit perpetrating to get worship and praise that belongs to God. And his name is Jesus. He's the son of God. And he is God. And he came, born of a virgin, walked on this earth for 33 and a half years, healed the sick, raised the dead, cast out devils, set keep people free, died on the cross to pay for the ultimate sin for every man, woman, boy, and girl that's going to be born or have been born or will be born on this earth. Sin. The blood of Jesus paid for that in full. You don't have to work to earn it. You don't have to do anything except believe and receive. And when you believe, that means you'll obey. No one believes and say they believe and yet still remain non-productive or non-responsive. Because your belief, what you do is what you say. If you believe, you, you do it. And Jesus said, take his yoke upon you and learn of him. Know his ways, know him. Know his word, know his will, know his name, know his love, know his power, know his purpose, know his plan. Know his spirit, the spirit of the Lord. The Bible says God would that we know righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. His kingdom of heaven is not meat and drink. We need meat and drink for the body. But meat and drink is not suffice to fill up the need or the lack of the spirit of our 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 uh our shortness. 
but he makes the fullness of it. He who? Jesus. And Jesus sent the Holy Spirit. When he went back to heaven, he sent the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, same thing. Same one, I'm sorry. And he's a person. He's not a it. He's not a thing. He's a person. And he come to reveal Jesus. Jesus come to reveal the Father. And Jesus, our Lord and Savior, when we preach Jesus, Jesus is glorified and Jesus glorified the Father and the Holy Ghost glorifies Jesus. And we're blessing and blessed. And you're blessed today. Be of good courage. You're hearing this word. That's a sign from God to you that good things are already working in your behalf. The Bible says only believe. Only believe the word of God. Only believe the name of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Only believe in the will of God. Believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit because God sent the Spirit of God for us to be filled with. God says he would come and he would walk in us and talk in us. He'd be our God and we would be his children. The Holy Ghost come to impart the Father and the Son in us. You say there's three, there's one. But he's revealed in the Son. He revealed in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In ancient time, they had many gods. Egyptians had many thousands of gods. Different countries said the more gods you were, the more prosper you were. In other words, they were describing the things that God had blessed and ordained. Nature, uh, productivity of, 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 of the vegetation and, and reproduction of the animals and, and then, and then the, the seasons. Those things were designed and put in place by God to operate nature. But nature does not, is not God. Nature is just a product of God's design and plan for us while we're here. He made the, the universe. He made the sun and the moon, the stars, the different planets. And in this earth, on this earth, he made man. He said he made man in his image and in his likeness. Then he gave, he gave man dominion, excuse me. He gave man dominion. That means rulership and authority and stewardship to handle and take care of everything that's here. So it was the will of God for this. And beloved, I want you to know, Jesus loves you. And now you, as those that believe, those that are born again, those that are filled with the Spirit, I want you to know that it's time for you to advance. It's time to rise up. It's time to go forth. It's time to... Speak the gospel to someone else that God so loves you, go so love, love the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth and continue believeth in him shall be saved. You're born again when you believe because you pass from death. See, you're already in death because sin brought death. It brought a curse upon the earth. But you pass, how about this? When we go to a funeral, we go to a funeral when someone has expired and passed from this life to celebrate their lives and the times we had with them. But when you get born again, you dead in sins and trespasses, but you become born again the minute you believe and receive Jesus as your Savior, confess your sins, you become, you are dead, but you become passed from death to life. How about that? Say, that's strange, I know. But God, the Lord Jesus, told Nicodemus that. He said, you must be born again. Nicodemus said, how can I be born again? Do I need to go back into my mother's womb? I'm an old man now. And he was saying, not that process, Nicodemus. You have to be born from above. You was first born of your mom and dad, which is earthly. Now you must be born again heavenly from God above and in being born again you become a new creature in Christ Jesus old things passed away and behold all things become new we're going to get into scriptures here to have a word a word for you today and then we're going to pray the prayer of faith and we're going to pray for miracles signs and wonders 
And God's going to loose that up on you, loose that up on my, my family, and up on everyone that hears and listen and believe. See, because not enough to listen and hear. You have to believe. And believing means you partake of by doing. Everyone that hear the word, you'll receive. God bless you today. Father, we ask today you bless this word. Sanctify this word to our peoples, to us. Let this word work beautifully. Holy Spirit, move as you will, sir. And we'll give God the praise through the name and the blood. And by your help, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, we will count it done. Amen. Psalm 16. Psalm 16. David, a poem of David, said it was probably intended to record memorable thoughts. But we're listening to what God is, what, what the prophet, he was a prophet, he was a king, and he was also a prophet, and he was a poet, and he was a mu musician, David was. He was a king, a prophet, a poet, and a musician, and a writer. The Holy Spirit allowed him, he allowed the Holy Spirit to use him to write the word of God mm -hmm. and prophesy the things, some things that the Lord Jesus Christ was going to come back and acknowledge that were for Jesus. And guess what? David was also the great, great grandfather of the Lord Jesus Christ by the bloodline of Mary, his mother. Because his father was God Almighty. He had no earthly father. That's why he came and he knew no sin. He needed Mary so that he could have a bodily form and come in the earth to take on sin for us. But he had the spirit of God in him so that when he died, when he passed from life, what we call life on the earth, to death, giving up his life, his heavenly life would pay for the spiritual death. It paid the debt. It pleased God. Psalm 16. Keep and protect me, O God, for you, in you, I have found refuge. And in you do I put my trust and hide myself. Some people don't need to know. You know, listen. Some people don't even understand. They need to hide themselves. Don't be so involved in everything. Have an answer for everything. You don't know everything. You don't know. You probably don't know what you've been talking about. If you know what you're supposed to be talking about, you would be more of a listener than a speaker. And then in listening, you would hear so you could discern. Or I'd use another word that people like and don't like to use. Judge. They don't like the word judge, yet they judge. You need to judge what's right, what's wrong. You need to judge what's God and what's man. You need to judge what's love and what's hate. You need to judge what's eternal and what is temporal. That means it ain't going to last long. You need to know the difference. You need to discern. God would that you'd be discerning. The Bible said the sons of Issachar, one of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, the sons of Israel. Israel and Jacob, the same person. God changed his name from Jacob to Israel. Jacob means he was a crookster, a supplanter, a ripper offer, a cheater, a slickster. But he had a desire for the will and plan of God. Do you know that there's two people, those that have a desire for God and those that don't? And it doesn't mean that either one of them are saved. You, how, do you, how do they have a desire for God and then I say? Because they dis, displeased with the life they have. They want to change from where they are. They, they know something is better. They have a taste. They have an inkling. They have a, a, a slight, you can see something. I saw something. I barely see it. I saw it. I don't know what I saw, but I saw something. It's different. 
In other words, they get a, a, a glimpse of something that they know is better than what they have. And they want to know how to do it. Do I earn enough money? Do I get enough uh, degrees? Do I uh, do enough things for people to like me? Am I attractive enough? Am I uh, 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 favorable enough toward people where they, they say, you're a good old Joe or a good old Joanne? And it's not any of those things. You first got to hear. The Bible says, how can they hear without a preacher? A, someone have to proclaim. Someone have to tell them. You got to hear it. It's got to be said. Then, and then after they hear, how, they have to believe what they hear. And in believing what they hear, then believing will lead to conviction. Conviction brings us to the point of making a judgment call. I need that. I don't have it, but I need it. And you don't have to go and buy it. It's not up for sale. Because it's so costly, you don't have anything to pay for it anyway. It's been paid for in advance for us. Jesus came in the time that was due to him through 42 generations and paid for it for us. Paid in full with his blood. Mm. He paid for it. And I'm just skipping some things. I'm going to come back to the scripture here, which I am in the scripture. He paid for it when he died on the cross and shed his blood. When his blood run down his side. When that uh, uh, soldier stuck him in the side with that spear. And that spear went through his side up to his heart sack and burst his heart sack. Blood and water came out. He paid for it when he died. Now, when he died, the Bible says he was buried in the tomb, the body was, but his spirit and soul went to hell. Why did he go to hell? Because he had to go to hell to take. Did you know God will take? He's a giver, but he's a taker. He takes what belongs to him. The keys of death, hell, and the grave. Jesus went and took it. Why, why did he need the keys of death out of the grave? Not for himself because hell had no power over him. Hell only had power over sinful people. People who were born of a father and mother and come in this world that are not born again. And that's what we all were until we received Christ. We are sinners on our way to a burning prepared for us hell. Actually, let me correct that. God didn't prepare hell for man. Hell was prepared for the devil and his angels, for his, his demons. But people are invading hell where they were not invited. God didn't invite them to go there. He have an invitation for them to go to heaven, but they have to accept Jesus and believe it and keep following him. You can't follow him so far and say, well, I'm going to quit now. I'm going back. You got to follow him to the end. You got to see what this road in, in, the end of the road is. But Jesus died on that cross. When he died on that cross, and, and he went to hell and took the keys. The Bible says he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave away from the devil. Rendered him powerless over those who believe in him because the devil had no power over Jesus. And Jesus is our champion. And as he rose, he preached to all the, the uh, to Abraham, David, uh, Joshua, uh, Isaiah, uh, Habakkuk, uh, Zephaniah. He preached to all those Old Testament saints that died believing in Jesus coming. They believe in the Messiah's coming. And then the Bible says he also, after he took the keys and preached to them, he's, do you know Jesus is a preacher? I thought it was just something, you know, making noise and hollering and preaching, which I, I holler because I'm excited. I'm not hollering because I'm trying to get your attention. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. I'm not doing this to give anybody any entertainment. I'm not trying to make friends. I'm not trying to make any, but I'm not out to try to make friends. Sometimes when you tell people the truth, they dislike you for that. But guess what? I'm responsible. If I don't tell you, God's going to hold me responsible. So I'd rather fear God than you. Because God has power to send my spirit, soul, and body to hell. And he has power to raise my body and my spirit and my soul up into a glorified body to go with Jesus. 
He even went and prepared a place for me to be with him. So who would want to be with the guy, the person, the master? I, he is a good master. The master that had prepared a way for you. And you don't have to go. It's a choice thing. It's a judgment thing. But Jesus preached to the saints that died, Mary, different ones that believed. He preached to them. And then he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave and come back up, leading them who died believing to go into heaven because they were covered under his blood. He went to heaven, and when he went to heaven, he took his blood that was shed on the cross. He went into the temple of heaven, and he sprinkled the blood over the mercy seat so that the forgiveness of sin would be covered so he could pay the price. And he paid the price when, see, because he, he's the high priest. He wasn't only the apostle. He wasn't only the, 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 the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. He wasn't only the intercessor, which uh, 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 a priest is an intercessor, but he was the one who paid, who uh, uh, did the ministry of the sacrificial work in the temple. And he went into the temple of heaven and sprinkled the blood across the message seat. And the Bible says, the demands... And God has demands. You know, everybody got demands. Jobs have demands. No problem. They, they paying the bill. They You owe them. They, that's they have demands. And if you want to uh, abide by the demands, you stay there and you do what they say. The doctors have demands. They tell you to do certain things. You don't do that. Well, he can't help you. The grocery store, they have demands. Even in this pandemic thing, they got demands. You, They have orders, and, you know, people don't like demands. They don't like, you can't tell me what to do. You told what to do every, every day of your life. When that son get up, they say it's time to get up. Some people decide not to. Some can't get, uh, get up because they're gone. But you, you, every day of your life, you have an instruction that you have to follow. The, the Bible says a wise man will take instruction, he become wiser. But a fool, when you instruct him, he'll get angry at you. You rebuke, rebuke means for correction, not destruction, not condemnation. A rebuke is for of a, a faithful person that love you, friend, family, that rebuke you. Or rebuke is just to say, that's the wrong thing, don't do that. A wise person will love you for rebuking him because you helped him get better. Because every we're not perfect. All of us need some help and some instruction. But a foolish person, when you rebuke him, he'll turn around and he don't know any better. You rebuking him to spare his life, he rebukes you back. How, how silly is that? Mm. That's senseless. I'm sparing you. I'm helping you. And you're getting angry at me instead of finding out, find out if I'm, if I'm true, if what I said is wrong and I'm being rude to you, then you shouldn't listen to me. If what I said for you is for life and it helps you, you should be thankful. Oh, boy, they saved my life. Yes, the Bible does tell us in minister and love, never being bitter and spite and rude and grumpy and mean at people. Never do it just because you got a voice or even just because you know something. Always minister from grace. I like my food with seasoning, so I want some taste to it. Put some taste on how you deal with people. Guess what? You're not only one that has something to give. Guess what? You have to receive. Hey. So in your in in any delivery, always do it from the standpoint of love and grace. Because the same grace you give is the same grace you live. Mm. If there is no grace you give, I think I'll leave the rest of it to your own imagination where that's at. But Jesus sprinkled that blood, when he sprinkled the blood. Then he came back. That's why he told Mary before he went to sprinkle the blood and she saw him. She thought he was the gardener. Mary Magdalene. She thought he was the gardener. She didn't recognize him because he was in his glorified body. And she saw him and she went to touch him. He said, touch me not, Mary, because I have not ascended to my father and your father, my God and your God. But I, what I want you to do is go tell my brethren. And then he says, and Peter. Peter. Because Peter uh, 
denied him and said, he, I don't know him, I don't know him, he even cussed, he just cussed, he was cussing, that Texas style called cussing, he was just, he profanity, he was, he will prove, I ain't been with Jesus, Jesus folks don't talk like this, well, some of them do, and they're not close to him, and they don't stay with him, they talk like that. They wear a cross, they be in the pulpit, they be everywhere. Even if they ain't in the pulpit, When you're close to Jesus, your mouth will come clean. You don't want to say things that's contrary to the will of God. You love God and you love people. And you don't have time, spending time thinking about foolish people who do stuff. You, your Bible says, thou will keep him. Keep. K-E-E-T. Did I say P? I mean P. K-E-E-P. Thou will keep him. Him, her, them in perfect Undisturbed peace whose mind is stayed on God. If my mind is stayed on God, I can't do my work. Not so. Because God's word will never let you be delinquent in what you need to do. He'll never let you be missing or, or, or late to doing anything. When he tells you something, it's always keeping you abreast, keep you ahead, keep you informed, keep you wise. And guess what? He don't want you to listen to everything because everything is not beneficial. Some stuff you don't even have to have time for. You shouldn't have time for. That's why I say foolish. It's all right to laugh and have fun. It's all right to kid a little. But overly kidding and jesting where it goes into fleshly foolishness is against God and it's against you. You think it ain't. You say, oh, no, it's all right. It's just have fun. It's just have fun. No. Some stuff ain't necessary. But after he had rose and he was getting ready to go to heaven so he could sprinkle the blood, he said, Mary, don't touch me because I haven't gone to my God and your God. And the priest, when he get ready to go in to do his priestly work, he was not allowed to be with his wife. He was not allowed to to, to touch a dead body, somebody died, he couldn't go to the funeral. He couldn't, see, because he had to, he had to sanctify, set himself apart because he's going into the presence of God and he can't go in with anything on him or in him or being defiled by anything because if he go before the presence of God and he have defiled himself, he could fall dead in the temple trying to do his job. So he had to re remember this is a holy God. He, he is a holy man doing a holy work, and he has to obey the instructions and allow God to work through him in his sanctification part. But nonetheless, when he sprinkled that blood on that mercy seat, the Bible says the demands of a just God. What did he demand? He demand for, for, for sin to be paid through a sinless lamb. Not necessary to the lamb that you see, Mary's little lamb. Uh, Jesus was the lamb of God. God's God required a lamb for the, for the earthly priest to put up on there. And that lamb couldn't have a broken bone. He couldn't have spots on him. He couldn't have anything that make him. He couldn't have any kind of disease in him. He had to be a usually a, 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 a young kid lamb. Freshly born. And his blood poured out. God would take the demands of that. And that was only for one year. But Jesus' blood was shed to take care of the sins of everybody that was ever born and will be born. Well, what about them that died before he came? They, first, they If they died believing in the Messiah coming... Say, what if they didn't hear that? That's why Jesus preached it for. He preached to people that was dying, expecting or believing because they had a chance. That was another chance. You had to hear the preaching. Well, I don't like preaching. I don't like all that talking to me. I'm very intelligent. I don't need to talk to me like I'm not an intelligent person. I have high in, 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 you know, uh, intelligence. You don't have to talk to me like that. I got degrees, and you don't talk to me. I, I can speak 15 different languages, so you can't talk to me that way. Dear heart, it's not how someone talk to you, but it's what they're talking to you that makes a difference. If they're talking the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says you be careful that you don't 
deny or reject. Be careful that you don't spurn, kick off, reject God in the day of provocation. Because if you do, God will write you off. You have no recourse. Jesus is your entry. He is your ticket. You want to get from here to California, you got to go to the place where they're selling the tickets and where they're getting people to get up on their vessel to fly there. Jesus is the vessel. He's the ticket. He's the master. And if you don't use his ticket, if you his blood is a ticket, once you know the blood, the, the blood of Jesus is a ticket. Mm -hmm. And you don't accept his blood and you don't accept his name, his name, the Bible says, uh, uh, on the earth, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. For there's no other name given among men, given from heaven among men, whereby you may be saved, but the name of Jesus Christ, Jesus the anointed. I don't care if someone named Jesus, you say, I'm going to believe him because he's a nice person. If he's not the one that died for your sins and rose again the third day and went to heaven and is right now sitting at, on the right hand of God praying for us to make it, I'm thankful that he prays for me. Sometimes I don't feel like making it. Sometimes I act like I don't want to make it. You say, you mean you act like that? Yeah, I'm human like you. But I ain't going to use the excuse that I'm human because that ain't enough. That won't get me by. Let me... I'm going to read the book. I'm going to read the book. The book will let it talk for you. Talk for me too. Keep and protect me, O God, for in you I have found refuge, my covering. There's a place called refuge in the Bible where if two men got into a squabble and they was fighting, one was mad and he wanted to hurt the other, but he got killed because his intentions were to kill a man because he was angry. The other man killed the man in self-defense. There was a city called Refuge that this person who survived could go to and his families could not exact revenge upon him because he was protected. But if he walked out of that city of refuge, he was fair game. Jesus is our refuge from the devil's fair game against us. And in you do I put my trust and hide myself. Some people need to get hid. If you're not hid, you need to be hid under the blood. If you're covered under the blood, hid behind the cross, you can be delivered. If you're not, the call is out to you today, now. If you backslid, come back. So you're mad at somebody. Get over it. Forgive them. Somebody's mad at you. Don't let it be God. Because if God is mad at you, there's nobody can appeal for you. Jesus is the only one that can appeal. And if you offend Jesus, you have no lawyer. You have no one to speak up for you. You have nobody, no prophet, no apostle, no bishop, no pope, no, no deacon, no nobody, no mama, no intercessor can stand in the gap. Because Jesus is the only gap stander in her. That help you. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good beside or beyond you. I have no good besides or beyond you. I'm reading out of Amplified. I have no good besides or beyond you. You're the only one. I'm depending on you. See, when you depend on God, you got help. Listen, as for the godly, the saint, who are in the land, they are the excellent. Did you know you're called excellent? I, I don't feel like I'm excellent sometimes. That's why I keep checking myself, make sure I did my work right. And when I don't understand it, I want to get clear understand so I can do it correctly like it's supposed to be. But God called you excellent. In other words, the excellence is your acceptance of Jesus and your dependency to go on in him. And the Bible says you learn him. You know his way as you continue with him, as you keep in the word. You can't do it just on Sundays and Wednesdays. You can't just do it when we have this broadcast. You have a Bible. Pick up your Bible. Read your Bible. Talk to God. Ask the Holy Ghost to help you understand. If you need someone, I will help you.
But he called them the excellent because they seek God. They believe his word and they seek him. Call the excellent. Don't let it go to your head. <laughs> Don't let it go to your head. Hmm. Realize you still got both feet on the ground. And you have to have God's grace to keep you. That's why grace is, is sufficient for our insufficiency. The noble and the glorious in whom is all my delight. God said that. He said that. He delighted in us because we delight in him. And we, have to, we know we have to have him. No matter what good he let us do or produce, we realize it's all by him. He, he get the credit and the glory. Don't go around with your chest stuck out, bragging and bragging over folks and trying to make other people feel bad that you're already there and you ain't even nowhere near there. You probably ain't even at the door of there. And you're trying to brag. Don't, don't be stupid. That's being stupid. When you're ignorant, you don't know. But when you know and you do different, that's stupid. Don't do that. Don't be, you can be ignorant. Just to, you do your best to don't, not to stay ignorant. That's why knowledge is provided. God's word is provided so you don't be ignorant. Their sorrow shall be multiplied who choose another God. Hey. Their drink offering of blood I will not offer or take their name upon my lips. That's what David's saying. Because you're my God. You're purely my God. The Lord is my chosen and designed portion. He's my chosen. You have to say that for yourself. God is my portion. Jesus is my, I chose Jesus. He, now, I'm, listen, listen, Jesus said, you didn't choose me. I chose you. Thank you. Guess what? But I choose you back. Hello. Mm. And choosing you back, meaning you get to tell me what to do. Because you're the Lord. Lord don't mean you can call me Lord and that you can take care of me and I can do what I want to. You Lord and what you say go. And sometimes there's some things, that's why he has patience and grace, long suffering. He, sometimes he has to work with us because it takes a while for us sometimes to get it. Are y'all with me? You getting it? Yep. So it takes us a while to get it. Can You got that, huh? Yep. Take us a while to get it. He's patient. That's why patience pays off. Patience is a virtue. Patience. Realize, put yourself in their place. But I see it better than they do. You don't see everything. You just see one little bitty thing. Don't trip out over that little bitty seeing you have because you ain't seen everything. One you think can't see nothing can probably show you a whole bunch of stuff. And that would hurt your pride real bad. You ought to kill pride and get over it. That way you, be, you have, have some joy. So he says here, when I say kill pride, I don't mean harm anybody or yourself, but the foolish thought of thinking that you're superior because there ain't nobody superior except God. That's why God is the perfect one and he is perfecting us. That's, he called you excellent because you, you obey. Oh, man, I can't hardly take that, but I got to go on. Listen to what he said. Their sorrow shall be multiplied who choose another God. Their drink offering of the blood I will not offer or take their name upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen and my assigned portion, my cup. You hold and maintain my lot. You maintain my life and my purpose. When they put somebody in the ground, they call it a plot, but the plot is a part of a lot. It's a part of a piece of geographical something that's in a place. When you buy a house, you buy a lot to have the house built on. That lot is a piece of ground that's a part of your, 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 your possession, temporarily. That's your lot. Your life, your living, where you are, this is your lot. What you do is your lot. Hello, somebody. Let's go for it. Their lines are fallen for me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good heritage. Mm. He's not just talking about his mom and dad, although that is good. Did mom and dad be godly people? But he's talking about his heritage in God. I will bless the Lord 
who have given me counsel. He speaks to me. Hey, he talks to me, then he give, he give godly people who talk to me. Some godly people don't look like they're all that sharp, but if you got ears to hear, you can hear what the Holy Ghost is saying to you through them. Hello, somebody. Mm. Yes, my heart instructs me in the night season. See, you ponder and think on it. Sometime in a dream, sometime you just re rehearse the word. You heard the word and you think about it. They that think on God's word, the Bible says in Malachi, and then not and then not only they think on it, but they talk to one another about God's word. See, if we always talking about the day's affairs, what's going on, what people said, what the leaders said, and blah, 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 blah. Ain't talking about God. God ain't in it. We don't want God in it. We're, God, you wait. You stay at the church, and we get you at the church. We're going to breathe your air right now. We're going to enjoy life and your heart thump in our chest. But right now, we join everything else, and you just sit over there on the side. We don't want you, and you don't need to be inferring what we're doing. But they spend time talking, and they spend take some time and talk about what God have done. The Bible says God heard it, and he wrote it down. What was he writing it down for? Because he wanted to let it be memorialized and remembered that you, talk, you thought on him and you talked about him. And guess what? He says you're going to be his jewels. You know, jewels is like, you know, jewelry and precious stone and precious array that we wear. We like it because it looks nice. He says you're his precious possession. Hello. Mm -hmm. I have set the Lord continually before me. That means he's, he's my forethought on what I do. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory, my inner self rejoice. My body, too, shall rest and confidently dwell in safety. For you will not abandon me to Sheol, okay? Jesus said this, you won't leave me in hell. You won't suffer me, your Holy One, to be corrupted. My body be corrupted, and then and I stay in this place. Why? Because God's going to deliver them out. God gave him power to lay his life down. They did not kill Jesus. They put every, they stuck him, they nailed him to the cross, but he had to give his life up. They couldn't take it from him. He gave, God gave him power to give up his life, and then he gave him power to give his life, take his life back and get up out of the grave. Oh! And guess what? He says he give you power, but you got to be in him. You got to be a believer. You got to be a truster. You got to be a confidenter in him. The place of the dead. Neither will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life, and in your presence is fullness of joy. Glory to God. Everything, all the things we can enjoy, don't measure to the presence of Almighty God upon us. Ain't nothing wrong with the things we get a chance to enjoy. Thank God you get a chance to enjoy those things. But in God, His presence, there's nothing to compare with it. And your right hand. There is pleasure evermore. Mm -hmm. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you today and we thank you for this word we've heard. We thank you for people's lives and their faith being stirred up and the place of where they are in God is increased. The door is opening and they're, they're seeking and they're hungry and they're thirsting for you and for righteousness, your way. Lord, in the name of Jesus, stretch out your hand. Kill COVID-19. Heal souls and bodies and spirits and minds. Deliver, set free, save those who are not born again. Receive Jesus as your Savior. Ask the Lord to come into your life and, and, and birth you into the kingdom of God and make you a child of God and wash you clean in his blood and then heal bodies. Those who have death sentences and sickness and disease that's coming to take them out. I 
curse the sickness. I command the sickness to loose its hold and let you go free in the name of Jesus. Let bodies be made whole. Let spirits be made whole. Let souls be made whole. Let houses be made whole. Let families be made whole. Let things that God have ordained and given for life be for the glory of God and for the edification of the people. And let this word go out with the blood of Jesus to the destruction of the enemy. And let life be full to its fullest, to your glory and honor. Thank you, Lord, today. We give you glory and honor in the name of Jesus. Eyes be healed. Teeth and ears be healed. Lungs and esophagus and throat. Be healed. Kidneys, liver, bladder, pancreas, spleen, digestive system. Be healed. In the name of Jesus, every part, secret parts, every part, from the crown of the head to the sole of the feet, in the name of Jesus, for your glory. In the name of Jesus, we give you the praise, honor, and glory, Father. In Jesus' name, we bless you, and we bless the souls. To God be the glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Apostle Samuel, you're hearing the full gospel word of faith. Be strong in the Lord, beloved, and in his might, in Jesus' name. Amen.